بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ووجد عنده ظلما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما تعذب إما تعذب وإما تتخذ فيهم حسنا قال أما من ظلم فسوف يعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسلم حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سكرا كذلك وقد أحضنا بما لديه قبرا ثم أتلع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السبزين وجد من دونهما قوما قوما لا يكادون يفهمون قولا قالوا يا فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكني فيه وابني خير فأعينوني بقوة فأعينوني بقوة نجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفقوا حتى قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله ذكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا The question there about the Karnayim Karn is a horn so Karnani two horns Karnayim but Karn is also an age, an epoch. And that's why he's called Tulkarnay, because he lived two centuries. The second description, if the Khadib gets into that, he had a head that was sticking out a little bit, so his nickname was the two horned man. But Tulkarnay is somewhat blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with irresistible power. The power to pursue any goal he wants to pursue. And therefore, the equivalent of a superpower of all superpowers, and the equivalent of a ruling state of the world. And the definition of a ruling state is that it can impose its will on any rival. This is Zulkarnain. The first three Zulkarnain you put in the Quran was a Muslim. Zulkarnain was an Arab and he has been mentioned a lot in that poetry. It is narrated that Zulkarnain when he went for help he went walking. When Sayyidina Ibrahim heard that Zulkarnain was coming for help, Sayyidina Ibrahim went to greet Zulkarnain.
faith. Faith. Amen. Faith in Allah. When power rests on the foundations of faith, how will that power be used? The Quran describes now his first trip in the direction of the setting of the sun. And there he comes across by a body of dark water, meaning this is the farthest limit he can go. He comes across a people. What are you going to do with these people? So Karnayn replies and he says, Those who are guilty of acts of zulm, oppression, I'll punish them. And so power, when it rests on the foundations of faith, power is used to punish the oppressor. And then he went on to say, Those who have faith, not faith in the king of Allah, faith in Allah. Those who have faith and who are righteous in their conduct, we will treat them nicely. They will be rewarded. And so when power rests on the foundation of faith, that power will be used to reward those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous. And then Zulkarnay traveled in the opposite direction, in the direction of the rising of the sun. And there he came across a people for whom we had provided no cover, meaning cover from the elements. And so a people living an essentially primitive way of life. When power rests on the foundations of faith, how will power respond to the primitive way of life? To respect the primitive way of life and to allow these people to continue their indigenous way of life, preserved with integrity. Zulkarnay now travels in a third direction and there he comes across a pass between two mountain ranges and there in that pass he comes across a people. And the Quran describes these people. And pay careful attention to that description. Could not understand their language. No one could understand their language. Why could no one understand their language? Simple. Because these people had never interacted with the rest of mankind. There was never any trade, so you have to travel to learn languages to trade. They had never walked on the stage of history like the Chinese civilization, like the Egyptian civilization, like ancient Babylon, like Africa, like Mexico. No! These are people who live essentially like wild tribes. And so they are unknown in history. No one knows their language. So Kernan now has to employ interpreters to eventually get the job done so they can communicate. These people, when they can communicate with Zul Kernan, then informs him, Inna ya juja wa man juja muqsiduna filma. Ozul Karnayn, surely God and Magad are committing Fasad. Fasad in our territory. And Fasad, we told you yesterday, is to corrupt everything you touch. Can you help us? Can you build a barrier to protect us from God and Magad? Strange that they should ask for this request. We are prepared to pay you. Why don't they ask Sulkarnay, who is the ruling power in the world, just go in there and beat the living daylights out of them so they'll never dare to come back here? No! Can you build a barrier? 